Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I'm a residential real estate agent here in the greater Toronto area. And during this video, I'm going to share with you three unique techniques that you could use in order to get your offer accepted, which is especially important right now. In today's market, our inventory is very low. If you're a buyer and you've seen a property you like and you want to make an offer, but you're competing with another offer, then believe me, you need to be equipped with the right strategies to get your offer accepted. Otherwise, you're going to lose and unfortunately, you'll be back on the internet looking for the next property. So fortunately, I've sold hundreds of homes during my real estate career and I'll share with you some strategies that have personally worked for me as well as my colleagues. But before we jump ahead into this video, if you haven't yet watched my real estate predictions for 2021, I would highly advise you watch that video. I will link right here as well. If you're considering buying or selling, call me, call me, call me. And if you're a real estate agent that's come across this video, I'm always looking for great agents to collaborate with. If you'd like to know more about eXp Realty, where we have training, we have stock ownership, and we have the ability to earn passive income, then contact me. I can let you know why I switched from Remax over to eXp Realty. And let's get right into the video. According to RBC, they're expecting Canada's housing market to be headed for another record year in 2021. More specifically, they are expecting the average price to increase by 9% in Ontario. First, I'd like to draw your attention to this graph over here, which shows the spread between the average home price in Canada versus the US. Although something that we have found is the majority of sales are taking place in the more higher end price ranges in Canada versus the US. A fun fact for you though, is that in 2000. 20, a third of the sales in Canada took place in the three largest cities, therefore driving our average price up. However, in the US, there is quite a variance between the average sale price. And we're seeing that 2021 is truly off to a remarkable start. The average price is up across all home types between condos, freehold properties and in different areas of the GTA. It seems very, very challenging for buyers who are out there as our listing inventory is very low and I'm expecting it to stay this way for at least a few months. The average property is selling above its asking price. And if you see any listing that's been on the market over 30 days, likely it has some sort of issue, maybe some sort of stigma or the tenants are refusing to show the property. Here's a couple examples of some properties which sold over $100,000 above its asking price. This property here is in Markham, whereas this property is in a lower price range over in Ajax. And quite honestly, sellers are very happy right now. The prices they're getting for their homes are far exceeding their expectations, and they're able to call the shots that way. They can choose when they'd like to move out. They can construct these sale conditions to benefit them. Two of my sellers this month were able to get the highest price on their street. By the way, thank you very much for your business. So these are three tips I'll share with you in order to strengthen your offer, strengthen your position, and more likely get your offer accepted. And the first would be to remove your clauses. And what I mean by this is when you are making an offer on a property, it's usually contingent upon you getting proper financing in place as well as doing a home inspection. And if you have these two clauses, it will keep you safe, but the seller is obviously a lot less likely to go ahead and accept that offer because it means that you have a potential way to escape from the deal. So here Here's what an offer looks like on the Toronto Real Estate Board. The Schedule A is typically where conditions are outlined. And this is a very common clause that buyers do insert in an offer which says that the offer is conditional upon them being approved by their mortgage broker to purchase this specific property. There are ways around removing this clause to strengthen your position, but you'd have to speak with your mortgage broker about that just to make sure it's the right idea because they're going to take everything into consideration. They're going to take into consideration your budget, your pre-approval, the area that you're buying in, your down payment, and so forth. And then the next common clause is doing a home inspection. So similarly, you would have about a week in order to get a professional home inspector to look at the property and do a good diagnosis of anything that needs repairing and any issues that you should be aware of. So you can perhaps consider removing this clause in this market. It very often is being such that sellers are providing the buyers with a pre-inspection report. So the seller is doing the inspection for you before they're putting the property on the market, and therefore instilling more confidence to the buyer that the property is ready to be sold. But I would recommend that most purchasers out there, unless you're maybe a contractor or very experienced with buying, that you don't 
jump the gun and buy a property without doing an inspection, definitely do a home inspection. So if we're in the seller's position and we're looking at two offers, maybe one offer is $820,000, but it has those two clauses. And then the other offer is $800,000, yet it does not have those two clauses, meaning it's a firm deal. Then very often the seller is more likely to take that lower priced offer just because they know it's solid and there's no chance of the buyer getting cold feet and backing out of the deal. Here's the second strategy that you can take in order to get your offer accepted and that would be to offer unique benefits. So an example of a unique strategy would be to offer rent back to the seller, meaning that you would buy the property and allow the seller to stay in the property for maybe six months up to a year, depending on whatever you're comfortable with. But especially for investors, this is a strategy which we're seeing very often used in today's marketplace because there's sellers, for example, who are out there and they want to sell, but they haven't seen anything which they like. So this gives them the freedom to know that they can sell their property and stay there until they found the right fit for them. Then they can buy that property and then communicate with the person that purchased their home to say, okay, I bought something, now you can move in. And this is very often working. Both parties are happy. The buyers know that they've solidified a deal and the seller knows that they can go out and purchase a property. And similarly, you can offer the unique benefit to the seller to have the option to change the move out date. So an example of this would maybe the offer would say that the buyer would move in in four months, yet there would be a clause in the offer that says, in the event the seller decides to change the closing date, provided that they give 30 days notice to the buyer, then the buyer automatically accepts to this agreement. So I just recently had a seller where what they did was they said to the buyer, listen, let's arrange the closing date to be in six months, but if we find the property sooner, then we can adjust it earlier. And that was the only way that we were able to get the deal done. The seller was happy with the deal, as was the buyer. And I realized that most buyers probably wouldn't be okay with this strategy, but there's other things you can do in order to add unique benefits, like consider maybe paying the seller's closing costs or paying their moving fee, which especially makes it important for you to have the right real estate professional working in your interests as a buyer. And then the third strategy around getting your offer accepted is to communicate with the listing agent. Show the listing agent what makes you a good qualified buyer. Because we've experienced strong markets and really bad, crazy things happening and deals falling apart, especially in 2017, we want to know that there's nothing fishy going on, that our buyer is solid, they have their funds, and they have every intention of moving forward. So a simple technique that you can use is you can send to the listing agent a copy of your buyer's pre-approval. A buyer's pre-approval sheet clearly says how much they can afford and for a listing agent being able to see that information makes it more likely for them to take your offer a lot more seriously. And the other thing you can do is if you've already sold your property then tell that to the listing agent. Give them the specific address. Better yet have your agent send them an MLS copy of your listing because it says your name on it. It says all the transaction details. I mean what better proof is there to show a seller that you're a serious buyer? Send them a copy of your sold listing. And then this is really going to strengthen your position. A seller is more likely to take you seriously. And even if you as a buyer want to go ahead and insert those clauses, like I mentioned, for the home inspection and for getting a mortgage pre-approval, then some sellers may actually be okay with it, knowing that they know a little bit about you and that you're not gonna walk away from the deal tomorrow. If you found this information helpful, then do consider subscribing. I post updates pertaining to not only the Toronto real estate market, but taking advantage of the real estate market, even for investors, you'll likely find some good, useful information on this channel. And if you're a real estate agent that's watching this video, thanks for tuning in. If you're considering looking at other brokerages, then call me about eXp Realty. My number is 416-671-5218. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Take care, guys. Bye.